Good morning. Um, I wanted just to welcome you and uh, just say, get ready for a little history lesson. This is going to be fun. Um, this building, uh, this month, April of 2020, turns 100 years old. Um, and uh, it honestly, it's probably a lot older than 100 years old. Um, I found out in about year 1920, the Franklin County Auditor's Office actually went through all of Franklin County and re-zoned uh, and put new addresses on all the buildings. Um, so before then, they were lots or plots um, bef uh, before 1920. And uh, so a lot of the records before that were kind of lost um, um, from that time. But I was able to find some documents um, about a couple months ago about this building and about this space. So chances are this building has been here a lot longer than 100 years old, and um, which is really cool. So let me show you some fun stuff that I found out about this building. And uh, just to kind of give you an understanding a little bit of what, uh, what we're dealing with here. So um, this is a really cool document. Um, unfortunately, the original record was destroyed by a fire in January 31st of 1879. Um, so this is the earliest record they have of this building um, and uh, back in 1889 is when this was redone and uh, I'm just going to spin the camera around here to kind of show you. So this is basically downtown Old Hilliard um, as drawn up in 1889. And uh, as you can tell, there's a lot of different things. The streets and the addresses are very different. A lot of familiar names like Norwich or Franklin, those are discoverable ones. But um, as we can see, a lot of things are different uh, based off of the time. And uh, if we try to figure out where this building sat in this original plan, um, we actually had to go to um, the auditor's office and uh, go back to the lot numbers, what I told you about in the beginning. And um, this is the closest one we have have uh, of they have of this record of this lot number but I want us to look at this lot right here lot number 51 so if we look at lot number 51 because again before 1920 um, they didn't have addresses everything was lots at this time according to when I was communicated when I was doing this discovery and so lot 51 actually sits right there so there is our building that is where it sat um, back in 1889, and that is the actual space itself. So, pretty cool. So, as you can tell, this is a, a deed that was written up. Um, we have um, Henry McNaughton, the village of Hilliard. Um, he's buying it, uh, paid by Thomas Herbert. Um, again, we have the village of Hilliard, Franklin Street, uh, Franklin County, sorry. And uh, yeah, we have Henry McNaughton and looks like Lisa McNaughton, his wife, um, buying the property from Thomas Herbert in the year uh, 1919. So right before the change of address, so look at that, September 29th of uh, 1919. So here we have another form of documentation. And again, we have the name uh, Thomas Herbert up top. But what's interesting about this one versus uh, the one we just looked at, which is McNaughton, uh, which we saw here, um, there is absolutely no mention of McNaughton in this whatsoever. Um, we have the date of 1920, which is that address change. Uh, that lot 51 is what we talked about in the larger map there. Um, but nothing about the McNaughton whatsoever, according to this assessment list um, by Franklin County. Uh, but what we do have is we have a Carey and Silas Ethel, and then we have a bunch of different uh, name generations that's passed down from 1949 to 1963. Which is cool about this um, is because I did find this in the record, which is another copy of, of a deed as well. And uh, we have the uh, we have the names here with a lot. There's that lot number 51 again uh, that we pointed out to as well. Um, and then if on the back side, which is really cool, we have the name Silas and Ethel Carey, which again comes down to uh, the people that actually um, own the home at this time in 1949. From this point, the records become a little bit more modern. Um, most of them were digitized um, <clears throat> excuse me, as years went on. 
and uh, which is why this is not a complete list. This only goes back to a certain amount of time and date because after that, we have a pretty fair, um, uh, good list of people that actually who own the property and the home from that point forward. Um, there are some people that do remember the carries. Um, this uh, place has, uh, this house specifically has seen uh, many different changes, changeovers in history. Um, I was told by um, one resident at one time it was a uh, ice cream, uh, no, sorry, a candy shop. Um, another one uh, uh, remembers it kind of being almost like a general store type concept. There was a lot of them up and down Old Hilliard at the time, and uh, but this one also was a, a general store. Obviously, it's a home. A lot of people remember it being a home, but most people actually remember uh, the, the latest residents, uh, the earliest residents of this place uh, before our landlord, Tom Hurley, he took over this space in this building, and a lot of people might remember him a couple years ago. This space was called Solar Cafe, um, and he had um, a coffee shop shop, panini, uh, sandwiches, soups. Um, later on, it became a uh, wine and cheese area as well as a local craft beers uh, before we took over um, in uh, 2006, uh, 2000, wow, in 2016, there it is. And, uh, so I know this section looks a little bit different because you're like, wait, you're not in the same spot you were before uh, because um, I got new information um, that was provided me by one of the uh, relatives uh, to uh, the uh, Carey family and uh, I'm so grateful that he was able to provide this information. It's actually a piece of information I was looking for um, for the last couple of months. Um, I remember it was posted um, on a message to us um, when we first opened and uh, I could not for the life of me found, find it at all and uh, thankfully he was able to share that information again and uh, was able to help me um, correct the data that I had incorrect and so, um, so now I can be able to share this segment with you with the correct data. So I am grateful for that correction because it uh, that you just saw there on that picture and uh, it just confirms uh, what the dispatch and uh, also what the assessment paper has. So I want to show you this. This came out on the dispatch in November of 1995 and there we do. We have the, uh, the sisters. Uh, they were living in the home uh, and they had a bait and tackle shop um, and also, from according to that article, a general store as well. Um, and it looked like the general store sat on uh, the land where the patio is now and the homes that, uh, that were in the 4004 and 4002 address is where uh, they lived and um, that sort of thing, which is really cool um, just to kind of to kind of get that assessment. And so if we go back to um, this assessment sheet, there we go, we see, we see her name there in 1963 as the owner of this space. And again, there's her name as well. So you might be asking, uh, you're 4004, that's where Coffee Connection is, so where's 4002? Uh, 4002 is actually that building right there. So right, right next to us is 4002. And it, you see that garage back there? That's actually where the bait and tackle was actually uh, uh, taken care of. So as you might imagine, things obviously a lot different in this space than it was before, but I want to kind of give you a quick little uh, tour um, of what residents uh, told me that um, of this space and uh, what was in it and who was in it and um, where the different items were in this house of 4004. So again, uh, this house and the one right next to us, so 4004 and 4002 were homes for the, uh, the twin sisters um, that had a bait and tackle shop here in, in downtown Old Hilliard. And um, so one lived in one, one lived in the other one. And so I'll just kind of give you a quick tour. I know some of you might've heard this or not, but if not, this is gonna be great information. You're gonna fall in love with this, pretty cool. And again, a lot of this information that I'm telling you now came from local residents here in Hilliard um, that when we first opened, they came in and gave me a tour of where they remember everything was, uh, which I think is really cool. Um, it's a really neat uh, history of kind of a character of the building and that sort of thing, which is really cool. So where I'm standing in now, which you might be familiar, which is the bar, which is where you order your drinks and we have conversations and things like that. Um, this actually was not originally part of the home back then. This is called a summer kitchen. This was added on later on um, after the property was was done. Um, the original door frame, back door frame of the door is actually in this room, which is where we have our uh, merchandise uh, from different local vendors and things like that. And actually it's this door jam right here that you see right behind me is where the back door was. And this was a, was a kitchen that was added later on 
And the next time you uh, come in, when we are able to have people inside our store, uh, take a gander from the bar to here. Um, our landlord, Tom Hurley, he put together uh, these two plaques, um, one with a little bit of history and one a little bit about what the building looked like uh, before the renovations of Solar Cafe. The front entrance actually was was the door that's right here, um, which is facing Main Street on Hilliard. Um, but I want to point out some things about this home, which are really cool um, about about where we you know, where we figured out where things were. Uh, I don't know if you can see right there, but there's a gas line um, that came into the home, which more than likely a uh, oven uh, probably sat here at some point. And then right here, uh, right behind those uh, mugs right there, you can see the circle plate, um, that's the chimney. So chances are um, at one point, there probably was a, a wood fire um, uh, oven and stove that sat right here with this uh, refrigerator sitting right now on this table and then maybe eventually later on they added a gas line as well for convenience. So this probably was where uh, part of the kitchen was. Uh, some residents remember a spot over here uh, where this table's at. Uh, that was a spot where they uh, probably had a, a kitchen table that was over there. And over here was where the TV was. Um, and they had a little couch and a little TV that sat right over here. And in this room obviously was more seating area, more living area, and um, that sort of thing. Which is funny about this home is that no one really knows what's upstairs. Um, because one of the sisters, I was told, was a hoarder. And so uh, she rarely let anybody in her house, if anything, it was only the downstairs, but the upstairs from what they were told was it was just cram packed full of stuff. And so they actually never were able to go upstairs and actually able to see um, what was actually upstairs. So um, we, have, we don't even know, no one knows what's up there um, and that sort of thing. So, and that's something cool to celebrate. Um, in times like these where we have ups and downs in life, um, where we don't remember um, things that are, that are a little bit older. Um, I love history. I love learning about history. I love studying history um, because I find that we learn a lot about ourselves, us as human beings, uh, through that history. But also, most importantly, we get to give honor uh, to things that have been around for a while instead of just tearing them down. Um, there's something to be said about a building being in a community for over 100 years. And the history that this building um, ha contained within it, the character and the understanding about how old buildings like this give a community like Old Hilliard, specifically Old Hilliard, um, a sense of identity, a sense of purpose, a sense of, of belonging, um, where this building can tell a story. Um, and so I just encourage you, as we are celebrating today this building's 100 years of existence, according to Franklin County Auditor's Office in 1920, um, as we're celebrating today about it, I just want to uh, think about you as you are now doing social distancing, as you are now having plenty of free time on your hands. Um, contact your grandmothers, contact your grandfathers if they're alive, contact your brothers and sisters, contact some family members and ask them about your family's history. Um, you might have an heir, a family heirloom or something interesting that someone maybe gave you at some point or maybe you found up as you're cleaning your, your garage or your basement or you're just looking through totes of stuff. Um, find out the history of it. You might be very uh, surprised about where it came from, maybe its purpose, and uh, maybe it gives you a sense of, of identity and pride as your family line is there. So uh, thank you for celebrating with us. So, thanks for watching.